this Monday evening and welcome to the Tilt and Talk show sponsored by Boa Sports and of course our friends at SAS Autos and our good friends at Bordsley Labour Club. Tonight it's me of course here for an hour along with Paul Hipkiss. Good evening all. Mrs Brown <laughs> and the legend that is Martin Granger ladies and gentlemen. Good evening everybody. <laughs> Long- <laughs> <laughs> Now, as I do at the uh, at the start of every show, if there's any sad news, we always bring it you there and then. And as a couple this week, it's with great sadness that I have to tell you that the fellow Blue John Parry sadly passed away this morning after battling an ongoing illness. He loved Birmingham City Football Club, and I, for one, will miss talking blues with him. God bless John. You never got to go to one more game. How sad. And uh, a, a message to me from in the week I have read of a fellow Blue Nose who has passed away, Jeff Cleaver. Uh, following, uh, followed home and away and will be missed by many. Jeff had a lot of mental health issues and has taken the ultimate sacrifice. So if we could also remind people that it's good to talk, that would be great. And it is good to talk, people. It is good to talk. Um, everybody knows of my dilemmas earlier on in the year. I ain't hiding behind them or anything like that. Now, I, I take you one tablet a day. You know what? I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Martin, welcome along. Thank you for having me. Good evening. This is, of course, the Tilton Talk Show, and uh, what, a, what a career you had with us, mate. I mean, like, whoa, Granger, free kick, mate, Granger! Yeah, yeah it, it was a little bit stuttery at the start, really good for three quarters of it, but a bit disappointing the way it ended. But I uh, really enjoyed my time there, the nine years, I think it was nine well, years I did. as well, mate, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, also, a message from Pat Begley this week. The amazing Tilton Talk Show, despite all that's going on, the sheer quality of the show is amazing. Well done, Chris, Nick, Paul, and all the rest of the team. Thank you. I always watch either live or later. Keep right on. How much did we pay there? Oh. <laughs> I think that's really nice. I think that's really nice. Uh, 226 appearances, I believe, for the Blues. Yeah, uh, spanning. I think, well, when I first come to the club, I had an injury early on as well, which which didn't help. I ruptured my medial ligament. I think it was against Everton in a pre-season friendly, which put me out for I think nine months. So, but once I got fit from that, and had a really good run. To be honest, I didn't really have too many injuries. Too many injuries after that until obviously the one that uh, ultimately finished it. Unfortunately, if I'd have been the gaffer, you'd have been one of the first on the team sheet every week, mate. Thank every you. week. Yeah, yeah uh, it's just four. Uh, Go on, sorry. No, sorry, no, come on, carry on. All right, okay. Um, right, okay, there's uh, just some blues news that we've got this week. Uh, departures, uh, Mags, Grounds, Stockdale, Keita, and Montero's uh, contract isn't going to be renewed. Um, so it looks like we're having a bit of a clear out. Mm. Uh, doesn't seem to be anybody incoming at the minute, or we've certainly heard nothing, but um, that's one, two, three, four, five off the wage bill there. Mm. Yeah, we're obviously cutting back, aren't we, and, and having a bit of a rebuild. So, see what happens. Um, I was going to say in the summer, but the season will be probably still going then, wouldn't it, at this rate? So, um, just wait and see what happens, I suppose. I don't even know what's happening with the transfer window, whether it's going to be opening and closing the usual time or whether they're going to be extending it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's a crazy, crazy we'll time. Have to bring, we're going to have to bring players in, though, aren't we? We're going to have to bring players in. So, it'll be, uh, be interesting to see. Mm. You probably find that you can you you might get some gems pretty cheap now, mm. salary wise. Yeah, um, yeah. Pe- pe- people are going to be out of contracts and they're going to be looking to earn a living again, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Money, you, yeah. Money, is, money is going to be one of the things next next season, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know what I mean. With a lot of clubs. Yeah, you might you, you might have your one. Yeah, you might have your one or two that's going to pay big money and get all the top top players. But I, I think everyone may be in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got some nice comments coming in, Martin, for you. Anyway, obviously, as you can imagine, from uh, from some of our fans. Um, Paul, Paul Lilly's asking, what player did you model yourself on? When I was when I was a kid, I always wanted to be Glenn Oddle. Yeah, but that obviously that obviously changed because I went backwards. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, was, I liked I liked Stuart Pearce. To be honest. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he was he was one for me. Um, wore his art on his sleeve. Had a yeah. good left foot, liked to free kick. Julian Dix was another one. Overstepped the mark a little bit. I wouldn't say I've done that too much. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that sort of mould, I mean, Stuart Pearce would have been for me as a, as a, yeah. as a defender. 
yeah, one of my favourite players as a kid as well. Um, yeah. And uh, Mark Andrew Adams is also asking, how satisfying was it punching Kevin Muscat? That's if you did it, though. I don't know if you did it. it was no, skip, it, it, it was Martin O'Connor. I took off at waist height and went past him in at the hoardings, missed, and Martin punched him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned it when yeah, you it was, came on, actually. You had, like, some sort of an agreement going between you, didn't you, to, um, to see who was going to take him out first? Do you know, my game, when we ever, <laughs> whenever we played Wolves, I just... I didn't worry about the game. I just wanted it to smash him. Yeah. <laughs> it just, yeah, it was just one of them. I never, never really done it either. But Martin did. Martin, it, Martin hit him twice in two games. <laughs> was that all of them, or, or was it just him in particular that you were singling out? <laughs> oh, it was just him. He, I mean, the geezer. I mean, I used to go in hard and tackles, but he'll do you. Yeah. And he'll try and break your leg. That's that's, that's what I didn't like. And, he he, right. and if he, if he was 70 30 in his favour, he'd still go over the ball. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So just, yeah. I mean, to, be, to be fair, he was probably good at what he'd done because he rolled people. Yeah. 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 Um, Paul Gill's asking, um, it'd be interesting to hear what your thoughts are on football agents um, and if you had one back when you played and any stories about something that came out of a contract negotiation and how come the agents have turned it into financial, uh, sorry, how come the agents have turned into financial leeches in the game? I think you've got to blame the football clubs to certain points. Don't pay it. Yeah. You know, I mean, some some agents are getting six figure fees. It's just yeah. it's taking money, needless money out of the game. You, there should be a set amount if you're going to have an agent to represent you, and that's what they get. They don't get any more. I think they can take up to I think it's four or five percent of your annual salary as well if they don't get to take if they don't get um, the fee off the club. Mm. Um, but, Why is why is it that the clubs don't stick together and just come up with a solution for this and just say, right, it's it's stopping, that's it, end? I don't know. I think we had, um, at one point when I was at Birmingham, we had one agent and everything <clears throat> had to go through him. Now, that seems a little bit wrong to me. So why is money filtering through one person? Mm. Um, but I, I had, to be honest, I had first artist, uh, Phil Smith, ring me up when the Blackburn thing was all going off and um, the club, well, whether it was the club or Trevor wanted to sell me to Blackburn, but it didn't happen. He said, I will, I will do this, that and the other if you let me do the deal. So I didn't have an agent. So I said, well, I don't really want to go anyway. But the car, I think um, Trevor wanted, was it Paulson at the time? Christian Paulson, the centre midfield mm. player? Mm. Um, I was going to go there and now he's going to get him. Um, it didn't happen, and all of a sudden, the agent up sticks and left and never spoke to him again. Is this when, you, so, is this when they were in the Premier League? Is this when they were in the yeah, Premier League? We were in the Championship? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, Graham Soonis. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. But I, ne yeah. I never asked to leave. They said they'd come in, there was interest. Do you want to talk to them? I just was like, do I really want to move even further down the country now? Am I happy where I am? Yeah, kids are settled in school. Loved the, I love the club I was playing for. Um, but I think at the time, I mean, Trevor had, how many left backs did he have coming? Yeah, yeah, he had Simon Charlton. Simon Charlton. Simon Charlton, yep, yep. yep. Williams, the guy from Oxford, Simon Marsh. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if he was trying to get me out <laughs> at some <laughs> point. <laughs> but um, it didn't happen and then we just, uh, we just carried on. Yeah. No? That's good. Um, no, we're, obviously, we're, I'm delighted you never went, that's for sure. And I'm sure I can say that for all of our fans. Um, so Benjamin Jackson saying that Granger was my favourite player in the early 2000s. Who was your favourite left winger to play behind or in front of? So obviously when you played left mid, who was the, the best left back to play in front of? And when you played left back, who was the best left winger to play behind? Um, when I played left, oh, I had to be Lazar, Stanley. Yeah, oh, what a player. Yeah, without, without a shadow of doubt. I mean, that fella, even to now, I've never seen anyone cross the ball better on a no. full pelt. And he'll yeah. cross it round you. Um, yeah. Not very good for me because I couldn't get round him. If he was too fast. Um, <laughs> but left back like the behind me, I'd say I used to like playing in front of Jono. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, I mean, I put Jono in my team when we eventually come to it. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he was my he was my sort of sort of player, Jono. Um, yeah. And but uh, but the thing is, we can complement each other because we're both defenders. You won't get much flair down there. Because <laughs> during during your time with us, right, you must have played in every single position apart from maybe up front and in goal. I played in every the season I won player of the year. I played every position at some point in the game apart from goalkeeper. Yeah, I, I remember. Think we yeah. was last last ten minutes away, I went up front 
Uh, played right wing for about six weeks. Love that. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you have a bad game, just say, well, I'm playing right wing. Yeah, he was yeah. good to play. I played centre half, centre mid. I enjoyed playing in midfield. Uh, yeah. Enjoyed playing them on the right as well because you can get it cut in and have a shot and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, great well, stuff. But sometimes, sometimes when you we playing all those positions, they think he's not quite good at all, any of them. <laughs> yeah. And um, Stephen Gill's asking, what what was your favourite goal for us and why? So if you could go back and relive one of your goals, um, what which one would it be and why? Uh, uh, <laughs> do you know what? I'll, the, the, the best free kick I scored was probably West Ham at home in the cup. Yeah. Shakira Slot. But the most memorable goal, it was from about that far out, was the Ipswich one because the place just erupted. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talk yeah. about that game quite a lot, don't we, uh, Nick? Oh, the, atmosphere, uh, the atmosphere in that game. That it's... was louder than Millennium Stadium. Mate, I'll tell yeah. you what. I know I'm I've real. told this a thousand times, Martin, but you do need to know. I took a, a, an absolutely, completely deaf lad who'd been deaf from birth to that game, and that's the first time he'd heard anything in his life. No, he could right. actually hear it, them whistles in his ear. It, yeah, it's like, you know, when you put two radios on? It was... Yeah. Unreal. Uh, even now, it put, it's putting ears on the back of my neck. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Who's the, the, the best goal I score was from an inch. Yeah. <laughs> they all count, though, don't they? they all count. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just happy that I was faster than Jeff Allsfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, when 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 Dealey was on, he was on about we were talking about how bad the pitch was that night, and um, yeah, he was on the he found himself on the right wing, didn't he? Because he said it was the only place on the pitch he could have stood up. And he managed to get the cross into you then, didn't he? Which sort of, um, I remember like uh, yeah. coming together with the goalkeeper. And they, yeah, they keep in sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it sort of like bounced up, didn't it? And then you just headed it in from an angle, I remember. I was a nosebleed. I was so far up the pitch. But yeah. as I say, I showed, I showed Jeff a clean pair of heels, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> you did? And then it just it just erupted from after that. And then when, when that went in, I just knew we were going to win. I'll tell you 100%. what, I'm what, I'm saying, what a, I, it, 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 honestly, I, I've got goosebumps all over me, I'll, I'll promise you, right now. Oh, just, unreal. Yeah, was we were in there, was a few, there was a few tweets a little while ago, I think it was um, a couple of weeks ago, and it showed the first goal going in, and even then, I, I'm at work, on my break, having a look at it, and the airs are going up on the back of your neck, it's just <laughs> reliving it. Yeah, 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 a, yeah. When it is rocking, what a place. What a place. Oh, I've not been, I've played well, obviously played at a lot of grounds, but no atmosphere like there, no. like St Andrews, unreal. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Especially when it's full up 25,000 plus, it's just nothing, there's nothing better. Mm. And who's the best player you've ever played with and against? Uh, I mean, with, I mean, you've got your Dugaries and Fussells. I mean, I think Dugs only played a few games. Um, best player I've played with. It's a tough one. That's, there's, been a, there's been a lot for different reasons. Yeah. Um, but against... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you've got Omri, haven't you? I mean, I remember coming on a sub uh Arsenal at home, I think it was. And he played a one two Will Tilden before I turned he'd scored. <laughs> I was on the halfway line. <laughs> <laughs> but but when, when you play against the top players, they're, they're all good. I mean yeah. our first game we played up against Arsenal mm. and I was used to say to my dad, Premier League, you get so much time, it's all this, that and the other. <laughs> 70 minutes. I was fit. I was never quick but I was fit. But 70 minutes I was gone on my feet. Yeah. Yeah yeah. That, that Arsenal the, the, team was the, the, yeah, that Arsenal thing was ridiculous, weren't it? Then going back. Oh, to that. if it was if it wasn't for Percy, we would have lost ten 0 I think he added about eight off the line. Yeah, <laughs> it was a human wall. I think that day. Yeah. Does yours? Yeah. Can I just say this one? This one's quite good. Uh, uh, Carl Evans yeah. just says, um, uh, "Martin Granger, my left my left back in my all time Blues eleven, and I've been going since 1970, age seven, top man." There you go, from Carl. Evans. There you go. Thank you very much. No, it's a, it's a lovely did, you, did your lad Charlie still playing goal? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's just, um, we had a bit of a, towards the end, of, well, we had a new manager come in. He was number one at Orient. And uh, Justin Edinburgh come in and then just totally alienated him. Um, for whatever reason, we don't know why, because, I mean, God rest his soul, he's passed on now, Justin. 
Mm. So we'll never know the real reason why. Um, and then he, he had a busted wrist before that. So he's come out of, foot, he come out of league football. He was at Dulwich Hamlet last year, done really well. Had some really good interest. And then the lockdown came and it all finished. But he, he, done, really, he went, done really well last year. Good. You went into management yourself after for a short while, didn't you? Four days. Four days. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was a local side. And um, <laughs> at the time, Charlie... Charlie he uh, just been scouted by Norwich. He's just been scouted by Norwich. No, it's funny. He's just been scouted by Norwich. And, and Norwich is a, like, for us, is a six hour round trip. Mm. So I was taking him Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, driving him there and back. And as soon as, soon as I got the job, but uh, it was Chesnut FC, Norwich signed him, gave him a two year contract. I was like, <laughs> I can't expect my missus to do six. I was picking him up from school at three, getting to Norwich for six training training for two hours and getting him home at midnight and he'd go to bed. Mm. And I think I think we had one game on the, I think it was a Tuesday night. And then on the Thursday, I said to him, I said, we're, have to, we're just going to have to resign. <laughs> I said, he, says, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, he comes first. I've got, to, I've got to take him where he's got to go. If he's got a chance, then, you know, that was it. That was my, that was my, my four days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they, should... they... I had to get it sorry. in. I'm sorry, Ryan. That's all right. <laughs> Go on, Paul. Yeah. Go on, Paul. No, just just still on the manager subject. I was just going to ask who was your who was your favourite manager to play for in your career. Uh, I always go back to in my career, my old youth team manager, Steve Foley. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was absolutely as a coach. Uh, he was a mum, dad, disciplinarian, everything. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have gone on and done what I did because I struggled yeah. with a little bit of weight when I was younger and. He was always on to me and had me in the sauna on a bike and all that. I know you're not supposed to do that, but he, he cared. And his coaching ability to get you to do what he wanted and get the best out of you was fantastic. David Webb at Brentford, really enjoyed yeah. under him. Yeah. Um, one of the best 10 weeks of my career is with Barry Fry. He just, yeah. just lit up the place. Um, one minute he'd be in your face in the dressing room, spitting toothpaste at you while he's having a go at you brushing his teeth after the game, and then he'd buy a drink in a bar. Um, but Trevor, I suppose, he, he, uh, he, he was all right for me because I sort of had to keep proving him wrong to keep bringing people in. Uh, in the end, I think he sort of accepted that I was okay for him. Um, <laughs> but those ones, really, that stick yeah. out. I mean, Webby and Steve Foley was, was the ultimate for me. Mm-hmm. My old duty team manager. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Um, and any funny stories you can tell us? Any pranks or any anything you're you're, you're able to say? Obviously, uh, live on there. Uh, yeah, well, well, we'll have one with Benno. We'll drop Benno in it. Um, on, every away trip, right? He used to finish his dinner first, right? <laughs> go and get go and get your room key. I'll be a different person every week. Go and do a number two in your toilet. <laughs> not chuck any paper or anything down, and and go out to his own room. <laughs> he used to do it all the time. Every single time, every away trip. Yeah, well, most away trips. Yeah, you'd be like, you'd hear Benno. <laughs> Did he do it to the gaffer as well? I, 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 can't remember. I think he, Jono used to get copped with it a few times. They were buddies, yeah. weren't they? Um, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. He, he, I think he done it to Brucey when um, when he was a player. I'm sure he did. <laughs> Brilliant, Ma- Martin. I've got a train question. I'm, I'm really sorry about this. It's nothing Go to do with me. It's nothing to do. <laughs> and the chap who's uh, asking is Adam Wilkes, by the way. Ask Martin: steam, diesel, or electric? And the best one he's driven. Ah, I've only driven a few. I've not been doing that long, so it's electric. <laughs> my my class of trains are seven one seven. If anyone knows what that is, but nah. yeah, electric. And it's technology which I'm useless with. So. Yeah, yeah, we know. Well, beside anyone getting on my train. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Adam. Well, always, oh, he dared me to say that, so... Ah, it's all right. Got to be every always... boy a train driver. Sorry, Nick? Every little boy dreaming to be a train driver. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Was you into trains as a kid, Martin? Nah, just a ball on a bike. I had, that was it. <laughs> ball on a bike, no trains, no. We always ask as well, uh, Gray, we always ask as well, the players, um, best trainer and worst trainer and best dresser and worst dresser as well in the blue squad. <laughs> <laughs> you have to answer as well. <laughs> Probably the best dressed 
would be Paul Furlong. Is it, like he's always been ironed. He's been he's been mentioned more than once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, very dapper. Um, worst dressed, Jono. <laughs> by a long way. Um, and what was the other, sorry? What was the other? What was the other question? Best, best, best and worst dancer. Oh, best and worst dancer. Oh, I'd say Jono could throw some shapes. I must admit. I would say Nico Vassen would probably be the worst. <laughs> Brilliant. Martin, did you um, watch uh, the three-part series with Ari Redknapp this week? Yeah. Oh, my, four part. Was it four part or five part? I don't three know. Part. Three, it was three part, part yeah. wasn't it? Three. Harry's Heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harry's Heroes, yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah, all right. Sharon was in the background putting five fingers up like this, so and I ain't got a clue. <laughs> 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 was, was the camaraderie... <laughs> I mean, the camaraderie on that was absolutely superb. The the, the laughs and all kind of that, and you know, a lot of a lot of these guys came clean with some issues and that, that they got in their own personal lives. You yeah. know that you you wouldn't dream of. Um, you know, for the likes of Paul Merson when he, he's you know the issues that he had. We all know he was a, yeah. a big drinker, but um, uh, even, even the lad from across the expressway there, you know. He felt, yeah, you know, I actually I find I found that quite upsetting listening to yeah. Lee Andrews' story because you don't. You didn't really realise, obviously, the, how that affected him, and because you always see this sort of, he was quite out there, wasn't he? Cocky little uh, footballer, because he was. He was. I mean, you got to be arrogant when you're a footballer because you're playing on like a big stage, and he had that from a young age. And when it does finish, it does affect people differently. But uh, that that was hard to watch a little bit actually. I, I did I did feel for him. I must admit, mm. but yeah, it happens to a lot of people. Finished. Um, not initially, because right. you, you think you're going to go on forever, don't you? Um, and I, and I will admit, <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we was in we was in Spain one year, and I had a little bit of a bit of a break, not not depression or anything, but a little bit of a breakdown, a realization. Wow, what am I going to do now? Yeah. Um, and it was probably all pent up as well from our Karen dealt with the way I finished, which is a whole new story, a whole different story, which. A lot of people don't know what went on, and she'll probably say it didn't, but it did. And it just, I never come back to the club for a couple of years, two, three, four years after that, because it just, just, I hated football after that. As, is, that, as you, that a, is that a story you could share or not? Yeah, but I, I can tell you whatever you want and what you want to hear. I mean, to the fact of even having a testimonial that she didn't want to give me, she said, I don't really want to give you it, I'm only doing it because people are telling me to giving it in an international fortnight when the club was second from bottom, I think it was in February, wasn't it? Mm. Charging me £7,000 to use my own pitch. Um, yeah, all that sort of stuff, which... when uh, The first thing she said to me, she said, well, I'm going to grant you testimonial, but you're doing it all yourself. You're not getting any help. Well, what do I know about organising testimonial? Mm. You know? Uh, and that's why we couldn't get a team to play, because we had to... Because uh, it was an international fortnight. Mm. And uh, in the end, I just, to be honest, it was more asshole than it was worth. And I didn't even get a thank you off the three owners. I don't want anyone to roll any red carpet out, you know, but just thanks for your efforts, but nothing. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll roll the blue carpet out for you, mate. Yeah, there you go. No problem. It took me a while to get over that sort of sort of bit, and I didn't, I didn't really like football for a while. Despite you know? that, I can, guarantee, I can guarantee you were one of the fans. Well, you were definitely one of the fans' favourites, without a doubt. Yeah, I understood that. I, and I, and I should have just, just come back and showed me face and, and things like even to the job she offered me a job um i think bruce has sorted it out which was i think the salary was forty thousand pound a year they was going to put me overnight on a friday night um give me a day off during the week so i knew i'd gone home i would moved back south um uh, all these sort of perks and it was on an a4 piece of paper full up with all these terms and conditions and then three or four days later he come back in there was one line at the top and he went, you ain't going to like this. I, I said, I'm not going to like that, am I? And he went, no. He said, the, um, she's offered you 15 grand a year with nothing. So I said, you can shove out your ass, walked out, of, walked out of his office. And that was it. Never come back. I find that quite sad after all the service you gave us over the years. Yeah, It was the same owners as well, wasn't it, from start to finish? Yeah, yeah well, it sums it up with David Sullivan because... I was there four years and he walked past me in a tunnel. One of the only times he ever come down in the tunnel, he, he walked past and he went to me, he went, oh, you're um, oh, the one on the left side. I went, it's Martin Granger, chairman. He went, oh, that's it. 
four years it up in there and didn't even know who it was. <laughs> what? This is this is what you're dealing with. And he said he was a he was a fan, was he? L. Mm. Yeah, for one reason, one reason only. Money, money, mm. money. Do, do, and now do, do, he's ruining. Yeah. And now he's ruining West Ham. Mm. Yeah, that's a, a, an absolute yeah. travesty. What's going on down there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah well, same, same old, same old three, isn't it? I, th- I think, mm. I think, I think Nick, that was our first ass in ten years, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well <laughs> yep. First what? <laughs> first ass. <laughs> oh. Oh. That, that is four swearing. times now. <laughs> Oh, crap. Oh. Right. <laughs> Don't please. Sean me. McDowell, Grange. Sean McDowell's just said you're the reason why he wanted to play left back as a kid. Legend. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to play yeah, left back what, as a kid. I was a left what, winger. What, you're one of the reasons I turned up every. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was a left winger, believe it or not. I used to be uh, not bad at going past people, but I just got slower, so I had to go back that way. Uh, what do you remember about the Enkelman uh, moment at St Andrews? That was that oh, was just that was just a, a, that was just one of my favourite ever. But, five minutes. Of you know, I, I don't actually think he touched it. You know, I don't actually from no, where I, I was. I think he, I think <laughs> the, his reaction, and I don't think he probably knew the rules. He dropped himself in it. But yeah, because yeah, because even it was your to the point it, it, it was your misplaced pass when it down the channel that went yeah, out for the throw. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I, does that class as an assist? Yeah. Yeah. So he. Um, but it even tops it off and the fan comes off and gives him the nice hand gesture and runs off again. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. one of the craziest moments in football, isn't it? But sadly, I think sadly got, he passed away a few months ago. Oh, did he? Yeah. 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 So, Shame. yeah. Um, but, like, it was it was an iconic moment. And, and we have an happy Enkelman <laughs> yeah. day on the anniversary Sorry? of that. We have a happy Enkelman day on the anniversary of that. Oh, year. brilliant. That's yeah, fantastic. People yeah. were recreating goals, weren't they, when the lockdown, when I think Dev done a Frank Worthen. I was tempted to do the Enkelman in the garden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh you should do it. You've got to do that. <laughs> do, it, yeah, do it. I've got to do that, Grange. You've got to do it, mate. Yeah. Do yeah. it. Do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I need the wife and the son to, to help me out, though, wouldn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just get one of them yeah. to throw it to you, yeah. That'll be hilarious. <laughs> I'll be all right kicking it out of play, wouldn't I? I'll do that, all right. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah, so going back to the uh, the um, Arizeros, was was the camaraderie the same with the Blues lads as, as uh, pretty much as it was on the TV? Yeah, I mean we come we come and done the charity game for Joey Hutchinson, and um, we hadn't seen each other for 10, 15 years. As soon as you get in the dressing room, same characters will be lively straight away. Benno, Jono, uh, and then it would be just as if we were twenty years ago in the same dressing room. Brilliant. Yeah. When we do get together, it's obviously people live in different parts of the country now, but you don't do it enough. And that's that's what people miss. Is that's that's the main thing. It's not so much the games and uh, and the training. It's the stressing them. Are you uh, you in touch with Tom Ross because he does the um, past, uh, post players, doesn't he? Like, uh, uh, yeah, I've, I've got Blue's Tom. I've, 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 yeah. no one gives, I'll never get an invite. <laughs> we'll have a word. You'll have to tell him. Yeah. I'll yeah, tell him. Apparently. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come and have a game now and then. Not every Sunday, lad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think my body be able to take it. <laughs> have we got well, any questions from the week? Or? Sorry, go on, Nick. Have we got any questions from in the week? I think that's what I've just I've asked most of them, to be fair, now. Okay, um, cool. I, I was just going to say, should we get on to your 1 to 11? Oh, yeah, yeah, go on, then. Let's upset some people. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'd like one. I've got to get about 18 <laughs> in my side. Uh, I'm going to go number one. Then I, I'll, I, the, the reason I'm I'm picking these is the ones that I played most with at my time at Blues, and and they're probably the people that I would want in my team. Even though I've left out some really, really, really good players, um, but this is these are the ones I would pick. I'd have Benno in goal. Yeah. What uh, formation? Like, what, what formation? Four, 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 two, and I'm old school. <laughs> Best formation. Old, yeah. Well, I'd have um, John O. Just I know he can play there, but he's he's my left back today. Yeah. Um, then I've gone Gary Rowett centre half with Darren Purse. That's good. Um, yeah. Jeff Kenner right back. Mm-hmm. Just missed out on a captaincy. Jeff Kenner, really really good footballer, good leader, good talker in the dressing room. Premier um, League, Premier League winner as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. You can see that Jeff was. He was a, he was a good ball player, right back, really yeah. really good. 
Uh, then we've got the Stanley left wing yeah. with with my favourite cap, captain that I've played under all, all my career with different clubs with Skipper, Martin. Martin O'Connor. Yeah, he was a leader, really good dressing room and he would tell you as well in the dressing room. Um, then you've got your flair player next to him, Yuzi. He yeah. can do everything. Great he can do player. everything by tackle. If he could stick a little Roy Keane in, in him as well, I think he would have gone a long way a lot earlier. Uh, mm. But he had everything. Uh, he, he'd do things in training that you just sit there and just thinking, what are you doing here? You know, he, he mm. was that good. Mm. And then we got my little work also on the right, Macca, Johnny McCarthy. Mm-hmm. Um, up and down, you know what you're going to get. Um, and then up top, you've got the Rockweiler himself, little Devlin. I say little Devlin, but Paul. Uh, <laughs> for one, he's up there because the way he's tenacity and he wants to play, he's home, he's his hometown club, and you yeah. see what it meant to him when we went up. Yeah. And you, the other fellow, you've got the fellow like that, I at pace for the inch, the goal from the inch, Jeff also. That's a great and team. I've, I've, I've left out some really good ones. Like you could have a front three there of Dealey, Furs and Peter and Love. I mean, you've got Dugary and Fussell, but it's difficult. I played with these guys longer. I mean, you've got Andrew Johnson, which was one of the worst decisions the football club ever done was swapping in for Clinton Morrison. Yeah. yeah. You know? That, that was outrageous. That, that was, just didn't get that at all. Uh, Paul Devlin yeah. just says um, that you know a player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, that's only because I want him to treat me nice next time we come and do the corporate thing yeah, at the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's been staying on waiting for you to, to name him in the team. Oh, then. He'll, he'll bugger off then. <laughs> yeah. Two swear words in one night. <laughs> <laughs> Bugger's not swear. Oh, it is you, I suppose. It is. Oh, damn. <laughs> I was only bragging that's before. A, that's a great. That's a great. That's, a, that, that's an excellent team that is, and uh, I think that'd finish well. That that'd probably win the championship quite comfortably now, wouldn't it? Well, it's a it's a it's a workhorse. It's yeah. a working team that. Yeah. Um, and then you've got you got Stanley on your left, and you've got Yuzi your flair in the middle. You got Martin O'Connor going sideways and backwards, like yeah, like the good old Ray Wilkins commanding. Yeah. And then you've got the industry up front when yeah. Jeff could finish as well. Also could finish, to be fair. Mm. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. A bit of industry. A bit of spite. Skip, Skip's been in every team, hasn't he? I think he's been in every team. Bar he's trying to he's tell us. The infu- he's the influence yeah. he has on the lads. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's, he's just... He's, he's texting me now, probably saying how much he's got to give me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you, you beat me to it, though. He's trying to tell us that he's paying you all. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> he, he, that's, that's, what, that's what a captain, why people pick them. You know, that's, that's the, that's you see, Birmingham, as yeah, Birmingham fans, what, what we, what, I mean, what we demand as fans, and, and it is a demand, is that workhorse ethic. Yeah, that's all we for us for. Yeah. You yeah, know, the thing is, the we, we try from second league. You've got to try first. Yeah, and it didn't work. We just want, we want 4 4 2. We want a workhorse, and, and we want you to get stuck in. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you obviously, well, you're going you're gonna to have your couple of flair. Flair players, which every yeah. team has, but you, ultimately you need a work, work ethic. Work ethic, yeah. You know? And then you, you play from a solid base. I mean, football's not difficult. People, people, coaches and managers make it difficult. I think. Yeah. You know, and there, that word yeah. we were saying earlier, philosophy. I hate that word. Yeah, football. me too. It hasn't changed for hundred <laughs> years ago. You know, it's just got quicker, better facilities, more money in the mm. game. Mm. You know, you probably think um, Man City have probably got better facilities in the NHS. Mm. The money they got in there, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're probably right. And then they can't play three games a week. Poor, poor them. You know. Yeah. Poor yeah, lads. Yeah. Yeah. We don't train, do you? The more you play, you don't train. Mm. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, there is that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's actually a good philosophy, Martin. It is really. Yeah. yeah. I've no, got... <laughs> not that worse. Who was the Who was the best and worst trainer, Grange, at the Blues when you was there? Best and worst trainer. Um... <laughs> Best trainer. I mean, some of the things you used to do in training was a joke. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I like to think. I used to. I used to train how I played. I used to fly around in training, and people didn't like it. But you know, <laughs> a, a lot, a lot of the lads, the worst trainer, the worst trainer. <laughs> Sometimes Benno. Yeah. <laughs> he'd just be, he just be funny. <laughs> Benno, you know, um, Steve Bruce on a Monday morning didn't when he played didn't particularly like training. No. Mike Neal. He hated it. Mark Newell, that's yeah. a, that's yeah. a blast, from, blast the past. from the past. Yeah. 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 He always used to, Trevor, Trevor always, 
just say to him, right, on the coach, right, we're going to go, no, I'm driving. <laughs> just get in the car and drive. Meet us here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the best, there was a few. I mean, the lads, to be fair, used to be a lot of lads that would really put it in in training. Because if I always used to train how I want to play. Yeah. Sometimes people didn't like that because you stuck a few heavy challenges in, but that's the only way I can prepare myself for a game. Yeah. And that's what I loved about from the terraces back in them days. You know, the, the game would go maybe a little bit, you know, a little bit quiet just for a few seconds. And then you'd yeah. put like a brilliant challenge in and then it just lifts the crowd, you know, the whole crowd, you know, it yeah, just gets the, whole, the atmosphere as well. It really helps with the atmosphere in the stadium as well. Yeah, other people do it. Like you could have Stan Azaridis will go on an yeah. amazing run and that will lift the crowd. People have the, yeah. their own different ways. Martin O'Connor will grill people. And people yeah. see that you get a reaction from the side. It shows people to care. Yeah, yeah, right. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Did you get the uh, the vibes from the fans then? Sorry, uh, Nick. Like if things weren't going quite right, did you did you did you understand it from the fans' point of view? Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, I I, I remember. I think there was a game at home. Did we lose two one when it was towards the end of Barry Fry? I think we lost two one at home. There was about ten and a half thousand there, and it was. You know, when you're playing, it just felt awkward. I don't mm. know if you can explain it like that. It just went flat. We actually were useless that day as well. Um, and you, you could sense it wasn't going particularly well at that time. And it was a shame, really, that Barry lost the job at the end of the season. But, um, yeah, that was, you, you can feel it from the side. But then also, like the Ipswich game, when going back to that, we get the first goal. I felt some, at times I was running and weren't even touching the floor. The atmosphere was it, it was just pushing you along that much. Yeah. yeah it, it can have it can have two effects. I mean, I didn't used to let it try and affect me. I just used to go about and try and do what I had to do to help my team win the game. Mm -hmm. Give us a funny Barry story that we can say. Very well. I've got a few few images of him when I when they first contacted me. Um, to go and meet him at the, it was a PFA award, the Grosvenor House Hotel. We went and knocked on the door. He had a dicky bow shirt, socks up to his knees, and just in his pants, me and my missus walked in. <laughs> 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 and uh, we sort of talked about doing a deal there. Then one of the first training sessions, he come walking across the uh, I don't know if you remember the old high tech uh, yep. basketball boots. He come walking across the field, no socks on, no laces in. No top on, stomach out with just a bright pair of red shorts on. Going, <laughs> 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 you can just imagine him saying yeah. that. <laughs> he just lifted everyone. He was just, he was, he was really, really passionate. I tell you what, what really good footballer as well. As really, really mm. good talent. Yeah. And uh, what else did he, What else did he had with him? Um, <laughs> in the dressing room, I think, I think I don't know if it was Jono just about getting one of the baths. He used to have like single baths in. And he brushed his teeth and spat in the water. <laughs> just probably, like, John <laughs> but not even realising, you know what I mean? Things like that. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, he had loads of kids, didn't he? I think my, my first game at home, these boys were, why is he having a team stall? They're volleying the ball across the dressing room. <laughs> he's thinking, what's going on here? But, I mean, but he, was, he was brilliant, Baz. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Oh, we loved him. And he was, he, he was he, he, even if you had a bad game, he'd lift your spirits, wouldn't he? Yeah, I mean, don't let me lie. He'd let you have it in the dressing room, deservedly so. But then he'd go, right, lads, we'll go for a drink. And he, yeah. he'd forget it like that outside. And then, yeah. right, because there's no point dwelling on it because once, if you've lost the game and you've performed poorly, what's the point what of keep going on about and going on about it? you just got to go to the next one. And that's how mm. I sort of got on with it. If I had had a bad game, I know my dad would say to me after every game, oh, I thought you'd done well, boy. And you know when you've played badly, but he's just picking you up. I just used to forget it. Next one. Get on with Did it. you watch yourself back on? Um, yes and no. You know, I mean, I've watched when I scored. <laughs> not when I got sent off or anything like that. You don't want to see them bits, do you? But, um, no, not really. No, me, 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 my old man likes to watch clips now and then and, and all that sort of stuff, but... My time's gone. I've, I've got I'm another. I've got another Barry Barry Fry question here. It's just come from um, John Thutland, Turland. He says, um, "Playing under Barry Fry, did you have games when you had no idea of the names of your co-players?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I was lucky. I think I was a second from last in when I. 
fifth one, I fifty fourth, oh, right. something like that. <laughs> yeah, so it was me and me and Pesh, I think, signed just before yeah, just before the well, the last ten weeks of the season. It was me and Pesh were the last two that come in. So yeah. and you know most of them anyway, because you played against them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he, he could turn a player in and out. <laughs> right. um, I've got I've got one from Craig as well. He says, uh, going back to Millennium, he says, uh, can you ask him how he felt when Carter put that pen away? Oh, ah, oh. for someone who's so young to do what he did on that stage is, I mean, I'd, I'd actually turned my ankle, I think, towards the end of the first period of extra time. And that's why I sort of, not because I missed one against Liverpool, I opted not to take one just in case if I planted and mm. it it, um, it give way or anything like that. But as soon as, as, soon as he scored, it seemed to be all right because I legged it. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, just just unreal. And you know, you're thinking, this was, what was it, the f- fifth time we tried, fifth time of asking? Yeah. And we actually, we actually made it and it was just, just a relief. Mm. Whether the club cleared you out and got in new players, We've done it. We've done what we achieved, and it took, I think, obviously that seven years, I think, in the making. Mm. To eventually do it, it was just, and get the club there where they've never been, it was just a brilliant achievement for the pile of lads. Mm. Carl yeah. wants to know, have you ever spoken to um, Kevin Muscat since? I had to, yeah. Stan Adorizis, uh, his first thought was um, uh, christening. Oh, dear. He said, come on, introduce you. I said, I don't want to be introduced to mate. He said, come on, there's all wives and girlfriends there, so I'd be nice. And said, hello. And he was sort of like awkward. He was just like, mm, and just walked off. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You know, and he's saying, said, oh, he's all right, and all that. And I just, not for me. Not my sort of person, really. <laughs> Love it. I'd Love like it. everyone going on, we could have just shut the door and. Uh, and gone for it, but you can't, can you? <laughs> I love the way I love the way Dev sent him for a hot dog when he scored against Crystal Palace in Trevor's first game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that was um that was when Skipper got sent off that day, didn't he? Sure did he? Did I can't he? remember that. Mm. Did he? He got sent off two and two and two, didn't he? Did he? Oh, I can't remember. I, I, think now, before, I? I think that was before. I think I think that was before he signed. You know, I think that that was Trevor's first game, wasn't it? So. It would, I think it would have been before he signed because uh, Trevor signed Skip, didn't he? Oh, was that St. Was that St. Andrews? Yeah, 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 yeah. Really hot sunny day. If you yeah, remember, yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah, does yeah, he yeah, yeah, remember yeah, these yeah. things? How does <laughs> he remember? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, can't he remember last week. The goal. He cut in, then he cut in with his right, and then he uh, put it in with his it, left, and then off the post. It was left, yeah, because it was on it was on Twitter the other day, and I was going to comment. Where did you get that left foot from? Yeah, <laughs> I've got it, Chris. Go on. Well, he's got no air. Who? Mr. Hipkiss. Yeah. Well, that's how I remember everything. So he gets more vitamin D on his head. <laughs> is what it is. Oh, that's what it is. It's got to be. Cool. <laughs> See, the thing is, Martin, I can't remember nothing, mate. Honestly, I'm, 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 the, I'm the worst memory <laughs> in the world. Terrible. And oh, right. uh, and Paul, uh, he, he can remember every chip he's ever eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember that much. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you have. You've got a cracking good memory. I tell you, it's. Uh, I, I wish I could do it. I wish, I, but I've just never been able to. That's why I was branded sick at school. Yeah, I'm, I'm useless, and Michael. Yeah, I'm that's it. <laughs> Worst away, I'm useless, Michael. <laughs> yeah, it was, well. a, it was a joke, but it never worked, did it? <laughs> never worked. <laughs> yeah, worst worst away ground you you ever went to. Oh, uh, probably before they done the. the the, the, the new stand probably crew they had a dressing room that was probably about six foot square really wow. terrible yeah it was really bad Torquay weren't very good back in the day oh, that yeah. wasn't a very good ground yeah remember the old Oxford ground as well the old manor ground I went there a couple of times yeah that was, uh, yeah, yeah. That was a whole yeah, that's... That was like four cow sheds when it ran a pitch yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even... Was, been... horrible oh, I lost it in it yeah. Yeah. Most of them, most of them, now they've all done little bits of building to them, so they're, they're, they're all pretty decent grounds, mm. most, most of them nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Do you, are you seeing much of Blues nowadays, do you? Um, what, what do you make of what we got now, the players and the team, from what you've seen? Well, uh, you, had, you had a few few foreign players come in, didn't you, when the, the last yeah. transfer, wasn't it? Um, yeah, last pre season. The, 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 the key now, I like, I like the big fellow up front, Jukovic. Yeah. He'd be my sort of player, I'd have him my team. Yeah. I think you've got to build a team around. Jude Bellingham, You've got to try and keep yeah. him as long as possible. 
have the yeah. right people look after him, don't get his head turned. If he goes to Manchester United, is he going to play for the next three years? Probably not. Exactly. And yeah. if, he, if, if they get loaned back to a club, is his art really going to be there? Mm. You know, you've got to try and keep him for the next, uh, even if he goes at 20 years old, he's yeah. a baby. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's going to be vital for, mm. for, for, from the fans as well. And it's going to be big money for him. But if he's progressing there, he's progressing, it's going to be bigger money for him. And they're yeah. all going to want him. So if it was me, I would try and tie him down and keep him there for as long as possible. Mm. What's your valuation at the moment? 16, well, it's stupid in it these days. If, if you keep him to his 20 years old, he's going to be 50 million pounds on there. The way he's going in the current yeah. market, yeah. You, know, you can't be asking a 50 million pound for a teenager now, even 30 million pound. Is it going to hopefully he's got a good head on his shoulders? Is it going to is it going to change him? You'd like to think not, um, but it just depends who's around him. He's, you know? he's, he's solid, his dad keeps him proper grounded, but that's 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 the good thing. Now that, that if he does that, then he'll have a bit of a chance, and yeah. You, yeah. You just got okay. I'd give him the captaincy, I would mm. give him it. Really? You know, give him something. Yeah, give him something to stay for. You know? That's a good shot. Really, That's a good, a good shot. Really, really, really keep him there. Build a team around him and really go for it. And then in three or four years' time, he's still going to be a he's still going to be a class player. That's, that's, one, of the, that's one of the things we don't do. We don't. We don't. We don't build teams around players. We never have done. We've no, always we, been a selling club. Financially, we're not allowed to, though, are we? Or we're not. We're not allowed no. to. We just can't find it. We can't compete, can we? No, we're a selling club. If you if you were if you want to move forward for the future, then you've got to keep people, try and keep people like him. Give him a good contract, mm -hmm. but not so good that it sort of takes his desire away. But you're saying his dad keeps him well grounded. That's what you want because mm -hmm. he's he's a local boy, talented. Keep him as, as as much as you can try and keep him, keep him. Mm -hmm. You've got to. Yeah. Yeah. But if someone comes in and says, we'll give you £40 million pound for a 16 year old, you're going to sell him like that 100%. Oh, God, yeah. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. But for me, if they, if they can, keep him. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you say, if we, if we can get another four years out of him playing regular, it's only going to be better for him than going and yeah. sitting on some bench, isn't it? Well, mm. or playing for someone's under 23s. You yeah. Want to do, that. do you want to play first team football? I mean, what what are Birmingham getting? 20,000 20, plus? Yeah. 25,000? Yeah, 20, 20. You're going to go and play for an under 23s where you're going to get four or five older pros in it. Don't really want to play in it. It's non competitive, rubbish football. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'd, I'd keep. Well, I'd, I'd break the bank to keep him at the club. Yeah, yeah. You know? well, one thing I can say about him: every single game is the last off the pitch, and it applauds, applauds all all the way around. We love that. Absolutely love. He's, oh, yeah. he's a supporter, isn't he? You know, yeah. he, he's got the he, the clubs in his heart. <laughs> you know, so make him captain. Make him the youngest ever captain. I would. Yeah. If I was a manager. Daniel, uh, sorry, Grudge. Daniel Ruan's just asking, what do you think of Pedersen? Uh, the current left back we got now. You seen him? You seen much of him? I've not seen too much, but he seems okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't, I can't really comment too much. I've not seen much Championship football this this year. Um, but what I have seen, he, he looks pretty solid. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, is, is he got the long throw? Any? He? Got long throw? Any? He? Pedersen? No, that's Mark Roberts. Roberts that's Mark Roberts. Yeah, Roberts, yeah, yeah, Mark Roberts. Yeah. Right. yeah, but what I have seen is. He looks okay, but I they can't do look very similar. Yeah, yeah, him and Mark Roberts look very similar from a distance. It's like watching Bross playing at the back for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's like I say, I've got, I've got to get to see some, some more football out and and, and watch some more games. Um, yeah, because obviously I go and watch, I go and watch my boy. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't see too much, too much other football apart from that. Mm. Have you been to Blue since the Villa game? I saw you. I saw you just before the Villa game. You was with Deb, weren't you? And um, who was you with? Yeah, Devin no, Morse, got, you? Um, the... yeah. They've um, they've asked me to come up. They asked me to come up and do a couple of games, which I couldn't do. It was too short notice. But I said next season, I'll try and get up a little bit more. I'll yeah, come, come a few matches. Good stuff. Yeah. Our friend Brenda Brown has just said you still look beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> random, <laughs> random. There you go. Sorry. Um, well, well, I've shaved my head off. Uh, uh, my hair was up here a little while ago. Ah, right. Martin. <laughs> Martin. She was talking about me. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. 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 Adam Wilkes is asking. Sorry, Chris. Adam Wilkes is asking. What do you think of VAR? I hate you. Hate it. Yeah. it. Oh, you, can't, you can't have a decision that goes back two minutes. It should no, be for goal line, goal line technology. 
wrongful dismissals, um, clear clear um, advantages, i.e. in when Thierry, Thierry Henry made the handball against Ireland, that sort of horrible, thing. Horrible man. Yeah, but the rest of it, to go back and say it's a penalty two minutes later, the game's flowing. You can't do I, I, I agree with that. But when, when you think about AJ in Cardiff, though, that, that was a, you know, that's got a, you need VAR for decisions yeah. like that, don't you? Yeah, that, that sort of thing. And uh, people dive in, you could use it after the game. But like, yeah, that sort of thing. And when it's clear, not like when you've got a toenail offside. Because you're no, taking no. out of, you're trying to make the game perfect and it's never going to be perfect. And no, no one's going to have a talking point on a Monday morning with their mates at work. No, you, know, you can't have some, Yeah, you can't have someone, their right wrist or their left wrist being offside. And they come back two minutes later after they've scored and say no goals. It's just, just ridiculous. I think. It's just, no, I think. Just I think there need, yeah, there needs to be daylight, doesn't there, between the players? That's the, that's the only way for me that they can work. Yeah, but also have people that are actually played football watching the yeah. monitors. And yeah. why does it take with modern technology take two or three minutes straight away? You'll go. That's take. That took me two seconds. He dived there. Yeah. Yellow card or or whatever or that he's handballed it there penalty. Um, it's like in the box now, you can't do nothing. Where before, you used to be able to have a little tug on the shirt, to stop him getting a run on you. You know, it, it's just too many. It's just too many cameras at the game as well. It's, yeah, it's, it's got ludicrous. They're making it too much into a perfect game, and it's never going to be perfect. You don't want it to yeah. be perfect. No, no, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we like we like the imperfections. Like it don't give you anything to shout at the ref at, does it? If it's <laughs> if it's taken out. No, of but hand. but now everyone. There's so many cameras there, and I know what you said. Everyone's doing this now, aren't they? <laughs> no, no, you don't have to watch me, mate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, back in the day, you 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 go, you know, L referee, you know all that, and he'll go, you know, Martin, what what are you talking about? And be having to go back at you. But now, even the referees are doing this. You know, just, yeah. What did um What did Paul Jewell say to you, Grange? Can you repeat what Paul Jewell said to you at Sheffield Wednesday? Do you remember when you squared up to him? Yeah, I think it was F and off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then afterwards, though, to be fair to him, uh, he come and he said, "Go on, lad." At the end, he shook my hand. Yeah, like, just, like... just showed a bit of passion. He kicked my ball away, didn't he? That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. You were taking the throw, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, remember? We were one 0 down, weren't we? About a minute to go, and booted yeah. it down the line. Can, can yeah. you just deny or confirm this, um, Martin? Oh dear. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, was it Martin who put a bit of water a, a bit of water on over Stan Collymore? As they walked off the pitch versus Put Fulham. Yes or no? Was that you? Did you throw some water over Stan Collymore? No. Did no, I... that might have been. Um, it, it, it weren't, um, no, it might have been, probably been Percy. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> it weren't me. Blame no. somebody else anyway. <laughs> no, that's probably Stan Percy would do, to squirt. Oh, all right, so. Stan Collymore's no, definitely one <laughs> Yeah, yes, that's Def- yeah. No, definitely, definitely weren't me, no. Yeah. Oh, back in the day, you could say arse on the radio. Oh, Christ. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. This is the BBC. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you in. Martin, are you related to Ross Gilder? I am, yeah. It's my cousin. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's from a chap called Lewis. From a fam- so- that's from my that's my family uh, down in the West Country, Taunton, yeah. Somerset. Yeah. yeah okay. And and Sean Kenny says, Martin, when you walk out to sing in Keep Right On, how did it make you feel? Oh, brilliant! Uh, even now, it's like there's been some tweets with away days and they're, they're singing it. I mm. turn it up when I'm driving in the car. It's, it's the best ever. I, I sing it all day long when I'm at work. Yeah, that's oh, brilliant. Yeah, and it gets especially when it's full, it gets louder and louder and louder. It's fantastic. I'll tell you what, if, yeah. you, want, if you want to get, get I'll tell you what, watching the um, the, the Blues versus Liverpool Millennium, the beginning when when uh, they're being introduced, yeah, and it's keep right on and you'll never work alone, walk alone together. Oh my yeah. god, that's goosebumps! Fantastic. That's goosebumps, isn't still, it? Still not as noisy as Ipswich game, though. No, 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 that was noisy. No, Nothing no. beats that, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. What was it like scoring against uh, scoring playing against the Villa? Hmm. Yeah, I only played. The, I was only lucky enough to play the once, but yeah. I'd like to have had the return at Villa Park just to see what that atmosphere was like as well. 
But mm. it's just great, isn't it? I mean, I we had friends in where we where we lived. They were Villa fans, and they used to get stick all the time. And when we beat them, it was just just brilliant. You just give that bit back, you know, just that little club on the A38, just on the outside yeah. of the, outside yeah. of the city, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just all that time. It took it took seven years to give them stick back. Yeah, it was great. You know, yeah. I, I yeah. wish I'd I wish I'd had a had a, um, a game at, at Villa Park. Well, the difference is as a support like, we we take that that will against them right yeah and we take it through the summer with us and it's yeah. a difference yeah. between having a, a summer full of barbecues or just stopping in with your hands on your head and that, <laughs> yeah. it's massive it, that's it. yeah it's brilliant but it's, it's, it's a chance to get one over them on isn't it you know mm. so yeah. I have one game one win so 100% for me it was an amazing night that was. That that, uh, that, yeah. that first game back in the Premier League. You know, that first game in the Premier League. That Monday night was just absolutely amazing, wasn't it? Brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Another, yeah. Another atmosphere. You know, I mean, even from their supporters, the atmosphere that it generated, even though yeah. there was only a few of them in in the yeah. uh, the, the part in the away end. But mm. yeah, it's a great great game to play. And like the West Brom game, the what the Wolves game, just love them games coming up. Yeah, the West, yeah we're just... we 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 ain't really got a problem with West Brom. The Dingles, are, oh, oh God, no, no, not Wolves, mate. <laughs> I, no, <laughs> and, 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 oh no, and yeah, uh, but that, but they were great games to play in. Really, yeah, really good games yeah. to play in. Atmosphere, yeah, yeah. I mean, the atmosphere is always good. Baggies game, but like it's, we ain't got that inbuilt hatred for them like we have no. for them on the street and for them mm. a little bit further north. Yeah. yeah, but look at the job. Look at the job they're doing now. Yeah, okay. They're one, they're one of the most entertaining teams, didn't they, up there? Yeah. Every bubble at the moment. Every bubble burst. Well, yeah, yeah, it will do. Hopefully, they will pass them going the other way. Especially <laughs> yeah. uh, quick, quick, lot. quick question from uh, from Ray. He says, "Question for Martin: Tackles or free kicks?" Ooh. Can I have both. <laughs> both. So, um, don't be wrong. It's it's, it's nice. It is nice scoring a goal, but ultimately a defender. And if the ball's there, it's mine. And I'll take <laughs> I'll, well, I'll take everything to win it yeah. if I have to. Yeah. You know, tackles, yeah. And we must say you were an absolute maestro at the free kicks as well. Yeah, mm. I had my moments. Yeah. I, I, I I've, I've also three now. You'd have been eight at the time or something like that. Second, there was a free kick. The first thing out of his goal, Granger. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you used to have to fight Devlin, uh, uh, Paul for it. He'd want it, and then if I'd missed, I'd get barked at. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, well, we, had, we, had some, we had some good takers at the time. I mean, Stan could take them, Paul Devlin could take them, uh, Gary Rabbit was a good free kick taker. Mm. Um, but I just try to og as many as I could. I remember mm. Stan getting a good one on his debut against Fulham in that same game yeah. that you talked about earlier. Yeah, Stan, Stan had a lovely left foot. Uh, yeah. You could tell when he, I think he had a resting heart rate, 48, you know, he was fit as anything. Yeah, and a, a lovely bloke as well, Stan. But yeah, really, yeah. really, 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 really top, top, top player. He was lucky to have him. Yeah. <clears throat> well, there yeah, you go. West Ham, West Ham, the West Ham free kick, I would say, was your best um, from from what I saw as well. But uh, Sheffield United as well was pretty special, weren't it, to get us in the playoffs? Yeah, yeah, that was an important goal to get us off to 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 get us on the roll to get into the play, uh, into the playoffs. But yeah. Also, Rob them away. I quite like the Rob. Yeah, 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 free yeah. Kick. But in that game, their centre half scored a better one at the same oh, end. Okay. If you remember, McIntosh, I think his name was unbelievable free kick. He was a left footer as well. Different, yeah, different, bag, yeah, bag you remember that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really, really good free kick. It's probably Benno rooted to his line, couldn't get anywhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, girls and boys, ladies and gents. That's an hour gone with Martin Granger. Um, Where's Martin, that gone? Where's that short gone? Break. Thanks for the absolute superb memories uh, through those years, mate. They were absolutely, oh, okay. they were brilliant. It was, it was, I mean, it's always much. a pleasure to go to St. Andrews, but like, I'll look back at that, that era. Certainly one of my favourites. Certainly one of my favourites. And yeah. uh, mine too. Really wish we could, you know, get that back and, you know, become that fighting force that we really should be. Second biggest city in the country. Uh, and uh, we should be, we should be right up there. So let's hope our fortunes can change off the pitch as well as on. And uh, we put the last seven or eight years behind us, and hopefully we can move on soon. Now, people, don't forget, whilst we're in lockdown, all through the summer we'll be doing this. Darren Carter's going to be with us next week, 
So, uh, McSheffrey, in it. Gary. McSheffrey next week, and it Gary McSheffrey next week. No, is it Gary McSheffrey now? Yeah, ne- yeah. Right. Gar- Darren, Car- Darren Carter's joining us, I think, in about three weeks or four weeks. I think right. Paul's, Paul's remembered, see, <laughs> he knows everything. <laughs> we'll check, li- I'll check later. All right, um, yeah, keep in touch with each other. That's the main thing through this, right? Um, we're supposedly coming out of this lockdown bit by bit. Um, me personally, I can't see it. Um, working in the pub industry, how long before we get back to work, I ain't got a clue. Mm. So, be nice to each other, be kind. That's it, be kind. Martin Granger. Just just, just so very quickly, can I, can I just very quickly ask Martin something? Martin, one thing we haven't talked about is your last appearance for us and the free yeah. kick against Manchester United. Yeah. We're doing it now. <laughs> well, well, Craig I, Corton said, Craig Corton said that, that was his favourite for a kick of yours. To be honest, I, I knew the school scientist, the uh, Tony Strudwick, who now works for Wales and uh, Sheffield Wednesday, and he actually said the goalkeeper got a, a rollicking because he was looking where he was going to throw it as the ball uh, was coming in. But the, the free kick I took before that, that's when I ruptured my patella tendon. And um, I didn't want to take the second one. And Brucey was screaming, take the free kick. And I was like, no, I can't take it. If I take and plant my leg, it's going to clap. Luckily, it didn't. And it, it went in. And that was it. Last game, done. Yeah. Not a bad way to go out, I suppose. Not a bad way to go out, was it? No, not at all. No. Not a bad way to go out of the show either, mate, reminding us of that moment. So thanks ever so much, yeah. Martin Granger. All the best. Thanks, Keep sir. safe. And uh, we know you're out there at work. You're one of the key workers. So uh, the clap's for you also every Thursday night. And that might be stopping this for this week, I'm not too sure. But um, absolute joy and a pleasure to have you on the show, my man. Um, bless you. You're going to go on the Wall of Fame as soon as this is all over, uh, along with everybody else that we've ever had. And what we've got to do is keep right on to the end of the road, stay safe, right? Talk to each other, keep in touch with people. Um, we've heard today there's a few folks struggling a little bit out there. Um, so, you know, really make the effort to, to just say hello to people and just ask them if they're okay. And it's okay not to be okay. Mm. Mm. It's okay not to be okay. And I'm going to have my tablet in a minute. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the legend that is Martin Granger. Thank you so very much, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure talking to you, mate. <laughs> okay, we'll see you back in next Monday night, 7.30. This is a Tilt and Talk show from myself. Good night from Paul Hipkiss. Good night. From Mrs. Brown. <laughs> and from Martin Granger. Good night, Jim. Take care. Good night. Keep right on. See you all. We're so happy following the